Welcome back. Wisconsin is officially an island now when it comes to legalized marijuana. Yesterday, Minnesota Governor Tim Walz signing a bill into law to legalize recreational marijuana use for adults 21 and older. That begins August 1st with commercial dispensaries coming online probably a year from now. Minnesota becomes the 23rd state in the U.S. to legalize recreational marijuana. And with Iowa allowing it for medical reasons, Wisconsin now surrounded by states that are generating tax revenue from the sale of cannabis. And we are joined today by State Senate Minority Leader Melissa Agard, from Democrat from Dane County, and one of the leading proponents of marijuana legalization here in the state. So let's just start with Minnesota's decision. Has it changed the narrative at all in Madison, Senator, now that we are surrounded by legalized states because Iowa has medicinal marijuana laws on the books? So certainly Wisconsin is officially an island of prohibition. Uh, with Minnesota, Michigan, and Illinois all having responsible adult usage on the books now. Uh, we know that there are um, tens of millions of dollars leaving our state in tax revenue and likely hundreds of millions of dollars leaving our state in economic stimulus um, to the surrounding communities. Uh, people in Wisconsin additionally have access to illicit cannabis in the state of Wisconsin. Um, unregulated market isn't helpful for anyone. And I know that by legalizing cannabis in Wisconsin, we can be a safer, more prosperous, and more free community. And that's why I've been leading on a bill in Wisconsin for about 10 years for responsible adult usage policy with a medicinal component. All right, so the medicinal component seems to be gaining some traction. We've heard legislative leaders talk about it, that, that this year they are open to that idea. Do you think Minnesota's decision improves the chances there? Has it changed that conversation? Uh, at this point, the temperature in the Capitol, I have not seen any policies brought forward by my colleagues on the other side of the aisle. In Wisconsin, uh, nearly two thirds of the people of the state of Wisconsin support responsible adult usage, uh, support, us, support us taking those steps forward um, to remove prohibition in Wisconsin. And frankly, if any of my legislative colleagues win their elections by that margin, it's considered a mandate. So I believe that it's past time for the will of the people to become the law of the land and for us um, to pass legislation in Wisconsin um, to be a responsible adult usage state. All right, those numbers you mentioned, polling numbers in the Marquette University Law School poll is 64% for, 30% against. Let's go to the tax revenue that could be out there. Do you have estimates on how much might be lost now to Minnesota? There are numbers out there on Illinois' Legislative Fiscal Bureau said the state took in $36 million in revenue from Wisconsin residents alone. That state generated $462 million in tax revenue off the sale of marijuana. Michigan, $198 million in tax revenue. And you mentioned the proximity of people of Wisconsin. It was 50% of Wisconsinites 21 and older that were within 75 miles of being able to drive to either Michigan or Illinois, or if they needed to Iowa for medicinal purposes. Minnesota brings a lot more people into close range. Any idea how much tax revenue or revenue could be lost to Minnesota because of this? Well, we don't know because they have not uh, passed their you know, the, the dispensaries aren't open right. yet. Um, but we do anticipate based on pretty conservative fiscal bureau estimates that we would have um, over $150 million of tax revenue in Wisconsin if we legalize um, on an annual basis. That's money that could go directly into our local communities um, to support mental health um, and support addiction, um, and support our friends and neighbors. We know that we would also be able to address youth usage, impaired driving, safe workplace conditions, um, frankly, the bill that I have drafted is over 100 pages of protections for the people of Wisconsin that currently do not exist because of the prohibition of cannabis. And that doesn't even take into consideration the egregious racial disparities or the impact on our, um, our agricultural heritage. So when you hear from your opponents that they don't like this, what is the prevailing argument against? And then how do you try and counter? Well, frankly, you know, the... There is not a prevailing argument against it. It depends on who you're talking to and frankly, the day, the time of the day that you're speaking to them. If we knew specifically what their concerns were and if their concerns were consistent, we could address that through comprehensive, thoughtful legislation. Prohibition didn't work in our state and our nation when it came to alcohol. Um, in Wisconsin, prohibition of margarine, oleo, did not work. 
uh, people were traveling to other states to purchase oleo and clearly prohibition of cannabis is not working we are less safe because of the fact that we aren't able to pass this bill and if we could actually have conversations at the committee level um, i am confident that we would be able to address any concerns that people have that are not included in the bill however I, as I mentioned earlier, over 100 pages of protections for people in Wisconsin. I think we've done a pretty good job. Uh, the very first time I put this bill out, there were only two states that had legalized for responsible adult usage. With Minnesota signing this bill into law yesterday, we're at 23. The genie's out of the bottle, folks. Um, it's past time for Wisconsin to realize that we will be a stronger state uh, by moving forward with this conversation. And it's not a matter of if this is gonna happen, it's a matter of when and what the details of that policy look like. All right, well, let me ask you, could when be 2023, yes or no? Uh, you know, I certainly wish that it could be 2023. We have an awful lot of um, big conversations happening in the building right now. Um, but I, again, it's not a matter of if, it's a matter of when and making sure that we do it in a way that supports Wisconsin's main streets, Wisconsin's businesses um, and Wisconsin's priorities. Is, is, paramount to me. Terrific. Senator, thanks so much for your time. Appreciate it. Thank you. And we did reach out to Senate Majority Leader Devin Lemihue in his office today for a comment. We have yet to hear back from them, but he is on record as saying back in January that Republicans in the state Senate are, quote, close, end quote, to supporting legalizing marijuana for medical use.